Hello, my name is Christy and I'm going to take you through about a 15 to 20 minute posture therapy workout. This is a gentle workout and the goal of it is to just gently wake up the deep stabilizers and anti-gravity muscles in your body, the muscles that help us to stay upright and to be balanced and neutral. And we'll do this without flexing or compressing the spine or any deep spinal movements. So our goal is to wake up our feet and our hips, our core and breathing muscles and our shoulders. And again, this is not going to involve any curling or flexing or deep side bends. And so this is great if you have osteoporosis, if you're covering, recovering from an injury, or you're just wanting a midday break at your desk. So you don't need any props. I have a small little pillow. You could certainly use a pillow if you'd like any type from home um, or you don't have to. It's nice to have it underneath your head though when you're lying on the ground. At some point we'll need to take it out and I'll let you know when that is. So let's get started lying on our back with your head on that pillow. Again if you'd like, you certainly don't have to. And we're just going to lie down on our back and start with some breathing. We'll start with one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. You can close your eyes to help your focus. And I'd like you to just try to breathe into both hands so that one hand isn't moving more than the other. Just close your eyes and notice where your breath tends to go when you take a deep inhale. And then just notice what happens on your exhale. If you're filling up your chest hand more than your low belly hand, see if you can let your low belly move a little bit more. And vice versa, if your belly is moving but not your chest, let both of them move. Notice that if you can let both of them move, your hands move a little bit away from each other on your inhalation, that's bringing a little bit of length, extension into the spine, and then your exhale, these gently move toward each other, softening the spine without flexing. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, just let your spine fall and soften. Two more like that. See if you can stretch your inhalation a little bit longer. So maybe seven or eight count inhalation. And then exhale through your nose or mouth for that same length of time. One more deep breath in. And then exhale gently and relax. Let's move now our hands down to our pelvis and see if there's a way that you can get your pelvis to sit level so you could put a cup of tea on your pelvis. That means that your low back isn't pushing flat into the mat unless you know that your back is a little bit happier there. So we're going to try to keep our pelvis nice and level just like we've done and holding that position, see if you can gently squeeze your glutes like you're tweezing your sitting bones toward each other. So just pushing a little work into your feet, but do that without flattening your back. And then gently relax. So this is an invisible exercise, but I trust that you're doing it. So squeeze your glutes. Think about squeezing your sitting bones toward each other, just waking up the backs of your legs. Your feet will get a little heavier. And then relax. Three more like that. Squeeze. You might even wrap your hands around to feel if those areas are working. And relax. Use your cup of tea still on your hips. Two and relax one more time, squeeze, and then gently release. Now keep your hips relaxed and neutral, pay attention to your feet, toes facing forward, spread all of your 10 toes, connect them into the mat, and now can you peel off your big toes without allowing your knees to open? Then press your big toes down, and now can you peel your outer eight toes off of the mat without allowing your knees to come in? Connect all 10 toes down again, and then peel off your big toes. Notice if your hands are starting to help. I noticed mine were. Press your big toes down. Lift your outer eight toes up, and gently down. Three more each way. As I've said in other videos, I think that our core starts in our feet. Our feet are the support system for our knees and our hips, and from there our spine. When the bones of our feet align well and the muscles are strong, we absorb impact more easily. Our knees don't have to take pressure if we're cycling or walking or hiking. And one more time each way.
Now connect your feet down to the mat, but make sure that they're not pushing into the mat. So we're going to take a deep breath in and place your hands on your ribs and your belly. As you exhale, make your feet a little bit lighter on the mat, not lifting them, just a little bit lighter. Again, another invisible exercise, and just check to make sure that you didn't lift your belly or the bones of your spine into your hand. And then inhale, give the full weight of your feet to the mat. Exhale, gently lighten your feet, keeping your neck relaxed, just feeling that corset engage, and then inhale, release. Exhale, lighten your feet as if you're going to lift them, but they're not lifting yet, and then relax. Exhale, gently lift or lighten and release. If you're feeling tension in your neck, you're making them too light. One more time, lighten and then release. Now keep that sense of lightness in the feet, but as long as only as light as your back doesn't talk to you and your neck stays relaxed. And let's try to keep now our hips level. Keep your right hip anchored and slowly open your left knee off to the left, only as far as your right knee and hip stay still. Exhale, slowly pull back to center. We'll do that same side eight times in a row. Our goal is not to do a lot of movement in the leg. Our goal is to keep our hips still from our abdominals, a little bit of our back muscles, the other leg still also. So we're exhaling to open, navel faces the sky. Inhale to slowly close. Exhale to slowly open. And inhale to close. Three more. As you're opening your left knee, can you turn your eyes only to the right? Not the head, just the eyes. Do that two more times. Keep your right hip anchored, open your left knee, turn your eyes to the right, and inhale to center. And then with light feet still, open the left knee, eyes go right, and slowly return to center. Now anchor your left hip, exhale, open your right knee, keep the left hip anchored. Inhale, center. You should feel the strings, the horizontal deep strings of your transversus abdominis, that TVA, the deep abdominal muscle, contracting to help stabilize. That wraps all the way around and connects into your lumbar spine. So find that corset as you open. Anchor the left hip as you open the right leg. And back to center slowly for our last three. Try to turn your eyes only to the left as you open the right knee and stabilize the hip. Inhale, center. Open, breathe out. And inhale, center. Last time, stable hips. Exhale, open, light feet. And now inhale, back to center. Let's now connect the backs of our legs a little more deeply to our hips, or at least in our mind. Take your head pad out and lie down flat with your hands beside you. So because we're gonna to try to work in neutral and we're interested in our posture and not compressing our back, as we go into our bridge, I encourage you not to flatten your back, but to lift your hips as if you've got that cup of tea there. Eventually it would spill towards you, but see if you can just keep your abdominal wall open so that you're not compressing as you lift. So we'll breathe in to prepare, press down through all four corners of your feet, and exhale to squeeze your buttocks and lift. Again, notice, that I haven't tucked my pubic bone high, my pubic bone and my navel are at about the same height. And then lower back down, landing your pelvis mostly level. Squeeze your buttocks and lift the hips, maybe going to a height where your hip crease can open for a moment, but then lead with the tailbone as you come back down. Squeeze and press, maybe going high enough to feel that hip flexor stretch, and then lower down, leading with your tailbone. Four more slowly. Stretch energy through the crown of your head. And inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Press down through the feet also. All parts of the foot touching the mat are pressing down firmly. Two more slowly. Breathe out to lift. And breathe in to lower. And exhale to slowly lift. And inhale to slowly lower. Relax your hips, let your knees now come together and your feet come apart as you take your arms into what I call cactus. So your elbows are beside you, your palms are up to the sky. If your fingernails don't find the floor comfortably, lift your hands like I'm doing here off of the floor so just your elbows push down. Your elbows are in line with your shoulders, palms to the sky, your knees are just falling together. Try if you can to just work through your shoulder blades, the backs of the arms, the shoulder blades back of the shoulder. And as you exhale, press your arms and fingernails into the floor. 
It's easy to do this and push your back up, but I want you to see if you can keep your back fairly soft and just work by pushing the arm bones down and the shoulder blades together, and then relax. You might even think about as you push down again, pushing your shoulder blades towards your chest, and just relax. These muscles help to, of course, lift our chest and keep our head upright over our spine when we're standing. And these muscles are the opposite muscles that are tight and overused when we're working at our desk and rounding forward when we're driving and everything really we do in daily life. We'll do another five of these. Breathe out to push down, another invisible exercise, and breathe in to relax. Push your arms into the floor. down and relax. We'll do two more times. Exhale down, relax, and last one. And relax. Great job. Roll over onto your side to face me, and let's just do a few hip exercises. Again, you're welcome to bring your pad with you, your little pillow if you'd like, or just support your head on your hand. And we're going to start with our knees drawn in toward our chest at 90 degrees and then our shins straight forward also from that. So that your shins are facing me or the baseboard in front of you. And then just relax your bottom arm. Your top arm can be there for balance or just resting on your hip if you'd like. Lift your top leg up to hip height, trying if you can to keep your shin parallel to the floor. And then from that position with your top knee as high or slightly higher than your top hip, just lower your top foot to your bottom pushing your knee maybe even a little bit higher, and then lift your top foot back up. So breathe out to lower your top foot, pushing the knee up, externally rotating the hip, and lift. Feel, maybe with your top hand, the back of your hip, the back of your pelvis, that fan-like muscle of the gluteals, working to rotate your leg. Push the top knee up, lower the foot, and release. Four more like that. In three more, we'll reverse this and internally rotate the leg. We're getting some warmth in the top hip. Push the top knee up, lower the foot, and release. Turn that thigh bone in the hip socket. Exhale and release. Hold the top foot up high. Lower your body. Lower your top knee to the bottom. Internally rotate, and then lift back to parallel. Turn your top thigh bone inward and lift. How's that feeling? Hopefully good. Let your hips just rest. You can see I am, and probably you are also, less mobile in that internal rotation, which is pretty common. Turn down and up. We'll do five more here. And lift. Three more. Two. And last one. Draw your knees a little closer to your chest, take your arms in front of you, and then take your top arm to the sky and open it to the wall behind you, and then take that top arm back to where you started. Four more like that. Keep your top arm straight. I don't have the room to do that here, but you can keep your top arm straight and open it, and again, allow your hips to move. Inhale, open, and exhale forward, back to your beginning, and last time, inhale and exhale slowly back. You can roll to your other side. I'm gonna press up to seated and then bring my head to the other end of the mat so I can continue to work facing you. As you set up, just make sure that you pull your head back in line with the hips. It often wants to come a little forward. And then draw your knees up to hip height like you're sitting in a chair and shift your feet forward so they're in the same line as your knees. All right, you might use your top hand on your hip to keep it level. Take your top leg up to about hip height and from there, we'll externally rotate, doing a small clam. So lower your top foot and push the top knee high. Back to level 12 of these. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Now your bottom hip is probably still fatigued and maybe even a little sore from our last set. So if you need to take a break, please do so. Six to go. Notice where in your body you're trying to help. Your shoulders and your face don't need to be tense. They don't need to be part of this. Let's just focus on our hips. Two more slowly. Rotate and lift. One more, then we internally rotate. 
and lift. Now hold the top foot high and lower your top knee down. Keep the foot lifted and then back to level. Top knee down, keep that foot up and back to level. So these hip muscles are so important for not only our hips, of course, and as a platform for our spine, but they help us to track our knees. Often, many knee problems that I see with my clients are not due to knee issues, but are related more to weakness around the hips or imbalance. Four more. Three. Two. And one. And when you're ready, relax all the way down. Palms together, let your shoulders relax. Inhale, top arm to the sky, and open your top arm chest toward the sky. And then exhale, top arm back to your start. Thoracic rotation, so as we're turning our chest, let your hips move if they need to, so you don't pull on your SI joint. And exhale, return and relax. Inhale, gently open. And exhale, gently return. And again, you can take your top arm to straight. I don't have the room to do that. Last one, inhale, open. And then exhale, great job. Gently return all the way. So from here, we're gonna roll over onto your belly. You can use that same pillow underneath your forehead or don't use any pillow at all. So lie now flat down on your belly. And then turn your head to the side. Reach down, this is a great opportunity for you to get in contact with your pubic bone, something everyone wants to do, right? Reach down above your pubic bone and just pull the flesh of your abdominals up so you can just firmly connect your pubic bone to the mat and so that your feet can connect also. Allow a little turn in of the leg bones. That helps us to keep some space on our, around our sacrum in the back of the pelvis. So we're going to stay in this position for a moment. Let your arms come down beside you and your shoulders roll forward. And then if you feel like you've got the breathing space, turn your forehead flat down on your mat. I'm gonna lift my head so I can talk to you, but I want you to keep your forehead flat down in center. So when you're ready, squeeze your shoulder blades together, hold the palms of your hands into your thighs, and we're going to stay here for 20 counts. So forehead down, pubic bone heavy, legs anchored, and you're just pinching your shoulder blades together and straightening your elbows. And holding work between the shoulder blades, these muscles, of course, related to our posture. Give me another 10 seconds. And then relax and rest, turn your head to the side. Wiggle your hips around if you need. And we'll do that one more time. Turn your forehead down. Anchor your pubic bone by squeezing your buttocks. Lengthen your legs. Roll your shoulder blades back and down. Lengthen the elbows. And hold again for 20 counts. Ten seconds to go. And then relax and release. And just wiggle your hips around a little bit side to side. All right, if you're still okay lying here on your belly, we've got one more exercise related to our shoulder girdle and our rotator cuff. You're gonna turn your forehead down again and take your arms into the cactus position, the same position we had when we were lying on our back. Keep your hips anchored, your forehead will stay down, and now slowly lift your arms off of the mat. Holding your arms lifted and your pubic bone down with your thumbs up high, can you just tap your elbows to the mat? Can we tap the elbows down and up? And we'll do that 12 times. So you're gonna lower, I'm gonna keep my head up, but I want your head down. Lower the elbows, lift back up. Lower your elbows, lift back up. Lower your elbows, lift back up. Lower the elbows and lift back up. Sorry for the noise, we're almost here. Six to go, lift, five, four, three, two, and one, and from there, press back into child's pose. Let your back release and take a few deep breaths there. And from there, we're just going to sit, and I suggest bringing either a towel or a pillow underneath your hips 
if cross leg works for you, you're welcome to stay cross leg. If you need your legs straight, go ahead and just take them wide apart where you're not feeling stretch, but where you do have support through your spine. I'm going to have my legs crossed, whatever works best for you. We'll bring our arms across our chest in genie position. So first, feel your hips connect with the surface on which you're sitting. So both hips are equally weighted. Relax your shoulders back and down and then zip up through your belly. Feel that you're rooted on your sitting bones. You're not tucked behind or forward of them. As you breathe in, turn your head only to the right. Eyes go too. As you breathe out, bring your shoulders and chest. Now as you breathe in, can you get a little bit taller? Just relax your hips. And as you breathe out, slowly return back to center. We'll do the same thing to the left. Inhale, eyes and head slowly turn left. Exhale, shoulders gently turn. Inhale, get taller between your ribs and your hips. And exhale, slowly go back to center. One more wet time each way. Inhale, turn your eyes right. Exhale, corset your waist to turn your spine. Inhale, get taller. And exhale, slowly back to center. Last time. Inhale, left. Chest rotates, exhale. Get taller, let the hips relax. And then slowly, gently come back to center. Great job. We're going to come off of that block and just take our legs into what we call in Pilates mermaid position. So send both of your legs to the left so that your left shin is facing the left side of the room and your right shin is forward. All right. Let's keep our elbows bent just to start. Fingertips, temples, and if you want to lengthen the arms a little bit more, you can. So just soft arms either on your head or your temples. We're going to gently breathe into the left and then gently breathe out to the right. Inhale to the left and exhale to the right. Feel free to lengthen the elbows if you'd like. So we're going to breathe in to the left and breathe out to the right. So this is a great exercise for getting a little space on the side of the waist where we can also get gripped, especially on one side. It's also a great position to train your legs to go into a little more internal rotation. That's the position your left leg is in right now, which we don't often get, but it's very healthy for the hip joint to balance it because we often have so much turn out. One more time each way. And then lengthen, exhale to your left. Switch your legs. This time your left shin will be forward and your right shin is back. If you get cramps in your hip or your foot, it's a sign you probably need to do this a little bit more, but just back off the stretch and rest. All right, so start with soft elbows and we'll breathe in this time to the right and then breathe out to the left. And if you feel your knee, the right knee, just flex your foot, that often helps. Inhale and exhale. Feel free to lengthen a little bit more in support with your bottom arm if you'd like. Long inhalation into your left ribs a long exhalation onto your right side. Inhale, lengthen. Notice that I'm not holding any of these stretches. I want to keep a dynamic stretch happening. Exhale, just so we're getting blood flowing in gentle space without pulling or tightening or causing more pain. And last one, exhale slowly, gently up to your side. When you're ready, we're going to gently come to center. Come on up to just your hands and your knees, and we'll finish with just a few wags of our tail and cats and dogs. So lengthen your spine, crown of the head away from your tail. Send your tail to the left and look over your left shoulder as you breathe in, and breathe out slowly back to center. Look over your right shoulder, right hip lifts, inhale, and exhale slowly back to center. Inhale, turn, and exhale, center and inhale, and exhale, center. Now, cats and dogs, breathe out to round your back, chin towards your chest, scoop your belly to the spine. Inhale, lengthen and extend. Bring your chest toward the ground, look up to the sky. Just go through a range of motion that works for your back. Three more, and you're done. Round your back as you breathe out. Shake out your head, perhaps, even. Gaze up, breathe in. Two more, gently round. and extend, and last one, gently round, and gently extend. Great job. I hope that you feel more awake in your postural muscles, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.